Mr. Watson would punish you if you got any of them wrong. Yeah. Then you would have to write them like five times out of yeah. each problem. Uh -huh. Then all the math that you're missing. If you didn't do it, he'd just send you ISP, and that's where you went for the whole class. Yeah. That was so you awesome. guess. I missed it. Every day. I missed it. Yes. I missed it. I almost failed sixth grade math. Because every day I didn't do my homework. He yeah. sent me until I finished. Yeah, I missed 15 <laughs> problems and had to write 150 problems on winter break. I never had to do those. I didn't want to do any schoolwork, but I just did my homework. And then I come back to school and never checked it. I see, so me, I guess, I guess I need to be tougher, don't I? Because me. No, everyone is threatening, threatening Josh with the detention is probably not enough. It's, it's working a lot better. That's all it. I don't know what you did on me. Your dad did it. I didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish you would, again, give me a call or tell him. I need to tell him, don't I? Call me when you're getting ready to yell at him or. You put it on speakerphone and set it on the table. And he'll hear the phone. <laughs> if, if he cries. I'll give I'll give some Turn extra up. points. I'll Turn pay up. I'll pay your dad some money. <laughs> All right, no, sorry. You got to help me so we can get through this quick today. I'll answer quite a few questions off of this packet. So, which one? You nine, on the nine on the second page. Everybody, follow along. Make sure you're listening. Back side of the first page, right? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to upload this YouTube? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. I didn't say nothing bad. I just said if, if no, you. No, I'm too frightened. I just said I, I would pay him if you were crying. Brighton was being weird. <laughs> Number nine, watch carefully. If we take, my graph might not be the greatest. Doesn't have to be really. We probably don't even really need to do the graph. Uh, let's see, M is three, five, three, five, somewhere about in there. One, negative two. And that was N. And O is negative three, two. So we have this triangle. <laughs> Sometimes when my arm gets in the way and I can't. Oh, here we go. Right. Why do like all, a lot of these questions they have like the word in at the bottom? Because like, he stole this. I, I got them off of like a. If, if you go to, and we'll talk about some of that here in a minute, if you go to the, the website that we talked about at the start of the year, that's the book. These, a lot of these questions, they have them on there, and you can like practice and do different and things. And it's like sitting there in front of my brother's like, come on, work. All right, on this one, they said, uh, so let's see, or ah, uh, this one shouldn't have been on there. I didn't realize it was on there. This is what we're going to cover today. It says order the angles from greatest to least. So watch, and this will sort of foreshadow into what we're going to do today. In a triangle, one of the theorems that we're going to cover today, in any triangle, <coughs> the longest side of the triangle has to be across from the biggest angle. So if this side was 12 and this side was 10, this angle over here has to be bigger than the angle that the 10 sides across from. And that's one of the theorems that we're going to cover today. So what we'd have to do with this one, find the length of each of these sides, and then we can tell which angle has to be the biggest. And I'll do this just real, real quickly using the distance formula. Somebody might need to have a calculator out to help me here in a minute. We'll do uh, OM first. 
and I'm just going to try to do most of this in my head. You subtract them, so that's a negative 6 for the x's. Square that, that's 36. 2 minus 5 is 3, negative 3. Square that, that's 9. Somebody help me out with the calculator here in a second. Tell me what the square root of 45 is, since it doesn't come out even. 6.7. 6.7. So that's the length of this side. 6.7. Uh, let's do O N next. Negative three minus one. It's negative four squared. That's sixteen. Two minus a negative two is four squared is sixteen. Somebody help me out and tell me what square root thirty two is. Five point six. So that means this side over here is five point six. You do MN. Does everybody sort of remember the distance formula? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big square root. Subtract the x's, square it, sub add that to subtracting the y's, square it. I'm just doing it in my head instead of. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 5 minus a negative 2 is 7. 7 squared is 49. Somebody help me out and tell me what the square root of 53 is. 7.2. Yeah. So the side over here is 7.2. So again, what the theorem says is that the longest side has to be across from the biggest angle. Smallest oh, side biggest. has to be across from the smallest angle. So if we wanted to list these in order from what they want, uh, greatest, so the biggest. Which one's the biggest? Because it's across from the 7, 2, right? So angle O, which one's the next biggest? N. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah, yeah it's across from the 6.7. So angle N, and then which angle has to be the smallest? M, because it's across from... So that would be your answer. Now, part of what we're going to do today, instead of just writing them out in a list like that, what's those symbols? Greater than. Notice when I've made my greater than symbols and less than symbols, what I make sure I did? They make sure you make them bigger so that they don't look like what? The angle symbols. So 246, number two, uh, let's see here. Find each variable. Point, what kind of point is that point right there? Centroid. Centroid. Because each of these is a what? Medium. Medium. Good. Got to know these definition stuff for the test next week. First 10 questions, I think, on the test are something like that. What's the point of concurrency for medians or something like that? Uh, let's see here. They tell us that this is 24. Six Z. Guaranteed, there's a problem like this on on the test too. This did I draw this wrong or something? Yeah. Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking at the wrong problem. You have them right. This is 10x. I was looking at the bottom problem instead of 15 3y. Uh, 9x plus 6. Find x and y, that's it. Give me an equation. So right here we know that these two are congruent, so 3y has to equal 15. What's y then? 5. That's part of our answer. Now over here, 
even though they split it up, what kind of triangle was this big triangle apparently? Isosceles. It was isosceles because these two had to be congruent. All right. Uh, so 9x plus 6 should equal 10x. Subtract 9x on both sides. So x equals 6. Nice problem there because you don't have to do anything else. Is that all they ask us for? Yeah. But I think this looks like a problem that might be on the test. So I may have been real lazy and just took this problem and put it right on the test. All right, they tell us in the directions up there, they say PT is an altitude. Mine doesn't look like it. What's an altitude do? And forms. All right, so we know that that's a right angle. Since that's an altitude, those two are right angles. Uh, they tell us that PX is a median. What's that tell us? All right, so PX is a median of this whole side. What two segments? Even though, again, mine doesn't look like it. What two segments have to be congruent? SX. SX has to be congruent to what? XR. XR. I know it's hard to look at my diagram and think that that's true because it looks terrible. Uh, they tell us RX, so from here to here, is X plus 7. And SX from here to there is 3X minus 11. So what do we know about those two? So we just set up that equation, 3X minus 11 has to equal, this segment has to equal that one. So X plus 7. Uh, subtract X. 2X minus 11 equals 7. Add 11. 2x equals 18, so what's x? Is that all they ask us to find was x? Yeah. Find r, oh, so we want to find the length of rs, so we want to find this whole length. Yeah. How would we do that? Plug in. Where's the easiest place to plug in? What's 9 plus 7? 16. Plus 16. And this other part has to be 16 also, so how long is the whole thing? 32. So RS equals 32. What if we do 6 real quick since we got the picture up here? They tell us RT, uh, where's RT right here, is X minus 6, and angle PTR is 8X minus 6. What equation could we set up from that? We would set that up, right? We know that 8x minus 6 should equal 90. We solve that, and I'm just going to solve it real quick. But they ask us to find RT, I think, didn't they? Yeah. How long would RT be? Six. So the answer to the next problem would be six. So they tried to trick you there because they threw in these two. Are those two things equal to each other? No, because one's a segment and one's a angle. They can't be equal. So you have to make sure you remember, hey, I just take this and set it equal to 90 because that was an altitude. Two forty eight number one should look something like this. tell us segment BF is an angle bisector. What's that tell us? If that's an angle bisector. 
So these two angles right here have to be congruent. Angle ABC, oh, of angle ABC, sorry. AE, BF, and CD are medians. So AE is a median. What's that tell us about these two segments? Congruent. Uh, what else did they say? BF is also a median. So those two have to be congruent. And CD is a median. So these two down here have to be congruent. And point P is then a what? Since all three of those are centroid. Uh, number one says DP. That goes from here to here. 4X uh, minus 3. Sorry, that looks terrible. Let's draw this one. 4X minus 3. And CP from here to here is 30. Guarantee there's a problem like this on the test. It might be a little more difficult than this one even. The centroid theorem. What does the centroid theorem tell us about the part from the vertex to the centroid? All right, this is two thirds of the whole thing, and this is one third, right? And we figured out that saying two thirds and one thirds didn't really help. How does this one compare to this part? It's twice as much. So if this one's or half if you think of it the other way, right? So if this one's 30, how much does this one have to be? 15. So tell me the equation we can set up. 4 equals 15. Please make sure you remember that. All right? Guaranteed on the test, what am I going to have a lot of equations that say? 4x minus 3 equals what? 30. Because they're not going to remember to take half of that other part, all right? This part has to be twice as long as that. So if we want to see how long this one is, we've got to take half of that to get it. Add three to both sides. Also, this is why Josh was whining, because he couldn't divide four into 18. How many fours are there in 18? Four. Four. How many left over? <laughs> just did it. So the slope of that is positive one half. Well, if we take that and we start running on each of these, which I'm not going to go through all this. We start running on each of these. Could I figure out what the coordinates are of each point as we go down through here by using one half? Yeah, I just take, if I'm at 4, 7 right here, if I go down one and to the left two, down one would be at three. No, sorry. Down one would be at six. Left two would be at two. So the point two six falls somewhere about in here. Then the next point, down one, would be at five. Left two, we'd be at zero. Wow, how much so far off? The drawing's terrible. But then we could find it out. Again, I'm not going to ask you anything I did for the test. I might ask you to find the coordinates of the midpoint. Or if this is a median, find the coordinates where it hits a line because that's going to be the midpoint. How is it ten? Didn't do it? Oh, I did all for two days. weeks? I did all my days. Oh, I do have one. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I did uh, number and then three. Oh, on what page? Um, good, uh, Come on, right? Last one? Yeah. Number three on the last page. Number three on the last page. What they tell us about segment BD here? What's it do? It's bisects the angle, right? So this has to be congruent to this. We had a theorem last time. There's actually two of them. One of them said if a point's on the perpendicular bisector, then it's the same distance from the endpoints. The one about the angle bisector said 
any point that falls on the angle bisector is the same distance from there. I'm going to pick a new point. Same distance from there. Still won't run. As it is to there. All right, so these two distances have to be the same. Well, they tell us this is 2x plus 6. And they tell us this is 4x minus 1. So what equation can you set up? 2x plus 6 equals 4x minus 1. We solve that, we get 2x equals 7. What's x equal then? 3.5, 3.5. Uh, they want to solve yeah, they want to just find something different, yeah. Yeah, they want you to find FE. I'll find, yeah, find the length of segment. FE or EF, whichever. Let's say, uh, which one of those is that? This bottom one? So what's 4 times 3.5? 4. Everybody have trouble when they have decimals? If I know that you can, what's 4 times 3? 12, what's half of 4? 2, 12 and 2 give you 14. 14 minus 1 is 13. You have to tell what like, the measurement is for. Like, it says the equation for the measurement. You can never tell what it's for because it's inside the time. If it's, you see how this one is? I know that's like, that's the degree. Right, if it's got the degree on it, then they're trying to tell you, hey, it goes to that angle. If it doesn't, then it'd be the segment that it's closest to. Eight yeah. and ten it like touches two segments. All right, I know some of them are. So that, because it looks like it's, now, if it was this one out here, it would have been on the outside. So that's got to go with that one in there, so on, so on. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I know some of them, it's hard to tell. You just gotta look through it and use, it, you know, use your brain a little bit. That's rough. I wasn't here last class. Can you want me to get into your first thing? Yeah, just wait till we get it turned in then. That'd be fine. Just don't forget. You got forgotten today. Uh, today is the 11th. Go ahead and start copying this down real quickly. 11. And like, that was the one I did way before. And I have a zero on noodle for it. Did I hand it back to you? I don't think so. Uh, it, you did it way before, I never quite did it. Why did I do it? 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 Why did I no, I think I All right, Brian, you do your boots and caps. Boots and pants up. And like, like, oh, you want to know how to basic people. Like, Brian, boots and pants. No, it's off the time. Look at you. I'll check up here. No, you guys can write this down. No, All right, yeah. do it. Right quickly, because we're going to go over this quickly. Oh, Hold on. <laughs> We told you last class is when I would have collected it, and if you weren't in here last class, then I couldn't have, you couldn't have turned it into me last class. Well, look for it. I bet you got it, because I I remember you doing that. I remember you saying, "Here's this." I said, "Oh, we haven't done that yet because of the stuff." Yeah, and I don't know where it is. You'll find it. I have faith in you. Hear that face? Right down weird. Was that Brighton? Yeah. No. Surprise. Brighton, I have made fun of you for like three days and you make a dumb joke like that. <laughs> He's just giving you reasons. I think it's just math class. He's like, Harrison, make fun of you. That's because you're just an easy person to make fun of. Aww. <laughs> 
All right, what we're going to cover today, using properties of inequalities. What are inequalities? Greater than alligator. All right, alligator mouse. Greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. And the one that everybody always forgets, that's an inequality. Not equal to is also an inequality. So those are your inequalities. What we're going to talk about is inequalities that deal with triangles, sides and angles of triangles, and how they're related. And uh, decide if three lengths of it. This is a big part of the test next week. Decide if three lengths could be a triangle. I'm going to give you three lengths, and if... If you listen closely, if you come in here next time, so if Nick comes in next time and he has this triangle drawn for me on his homework and shows it to me, I'll give Nick an A for the rest of the year and he doesn't have to do any work. Why doesn't he? Yeah, I'm saying it for everybody, but. I'm telling you, he does. If I come in and draw a triangle. Possible. All right, what I want you to do on your paper, on your homework, draw a triangle that has a side. Let's make it inches so you can actually fit it on a piece of paper. It's going to be uncomfortable. A side that's two inches long, a side that's three inches long, and a side that's five inches long. So if you come in here next time with that drawn on your paper. I'm not even joking. I'll do it. It's impossible. It's impossible. No, I'll do it. That means I would never mess with you guys. What kind of stuff is that? Right now. Josh, lawyer skills, lack of detail, can totally do it. I don't know. What is, I didn't get the last one. What, two, three, and five inches. What no lack of details there? There ain't nothing else you can see. Wait, stick no, no, no. I mean, like, what's the last one? Oh. Compare, no, measures of sides and angles in a triangle. Okay. All right. Do what? Okay. First theorem. Write this down. We're going to draw a picture with it also. There's like four theorems that we're going to go over today. None of them are real difficult if you pay attention. Draw some triangle with it. Doesn't matter what the triangle really looks like. I'll give you a second. They just make it a lot more wordy than it needs to be. Let's take a guess here. Which angle do you think is the biggest in my triangle? A. A. So we'll call it the biggest. If A is the biggest side, or I'm sorry, the biggest angle, which side has to be the longest side? Can't spell. So the biggest angle has to be across from the longest side. Which angle do you think is the next biggest? B. B. So we'll call it the middle, uh, middle angle. Which side has to be the middle side then? And then which angle looks to be the smallest angle? The side across from it has to be the shortest side. That's all this theorem says. Biggest angles cross from the biggest side. Smallest angles cross from the smallest side. Now, a lot of the times what they'll want you to do is list them in order. Let's list the angles in order from uh, largest to smallest, the angles. What's the largest angle? So angle A, and here I use, <coughs> I like using the alligator mouse. So angle A is greater than, what's the next angle? Angle, angle B, which is greater than, what's the smallest one? Let's go the opposite way for the uh, for the segments. Let's go from shortest to longest. 
what's the shortest segment or side? Segment AB is less than, what's the middle side? AC, right? Which is less than, what's the longest side? All right, so just different ways. On the one problem on the worksheet, we listed it out just using commas, right? From largest to smallest. So different ways that they could be listed. You could use the alligator mouse, could use just commas if you know they're going from largest, smallest, smallest, largest, whatever. Those are all different things that you could do. In a right triangle, which side always has to be the longest? The hypotenuse, because it's across from the right angle, right? In a right triangle, the hypotenuse always has to be the longest side because it's across from the right angle. In the right angle, if this angle is 90, can these two, one of these two be bigger than the 90 degree angle? No, it has to be the biggest angle, and that's, that's why it works out that way. So whenever you learned about Pythagorean's theorem and you learned it, this side was always the longest. The teacher probably just didn't tell you that. It's the longest because it's crossed from the biggest angle. All right, this theorem says the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than... The length of the third side. I'll draw my scribbles. Okay, it's not working very well. That's why it's messing with me anymore. All right, these are the symbols for larger than and smaller than. <laughs> Just kidding. That face scared. She didn't think she could draw that symbol. All right. Yeah, that's part of the symbol, too. If we, if we want it to be larger and smaller than, then we got to use the combination symbol that I just drew there. <laughs> Don't forget the little part up here either. If you forget that, then it's all wrong. What part? This little part right at the top there. The little alfalfa look. All right, what this theorem says, and there's, I think there's like eight problems about this. On that on the test, and it should be like the easiest section on the test next week. But either you know it or you don't. So if you listen right now, you probably get them all right. If you don't understand it and you don't ask, then you probably get them all wrong. All this theorem says: if you take any two sides of any triangle, they got to add up to be more than the third side. So if I told you this side was five. This side was seven. We can't actually find the third side, but what we can find is a range for that third side. It's lower than 12 and greater than zero. And what we would do, you can make this third side X if you want. I always just write third side. And then I put in the alligator mouse. So Brighton, you said it can't be any higher than what? How'd you get that? All right, so over here, you just take the two sides and you add. To get the high end of the range, you just add. Well, if you add to get the high end, how do you think you get the low end? You subtract. And you just do that. Yep. So we know that this side down here of this triangle, we don't know exactly what it is, but we know it has to fall between 2 and 12, right? It can't be anything else. It's got to fall in there. Now, could it be 2? No, it doesn't have a little equal to bar with it, does it? And it can't be 12. Could it be 2.1? Yeah, that would work, right? 
Let's look at another thing that we could do with this same setup. If I give you, why is it doing that? If I give you three numbers, and I say, is it possible for those to be the sides of a triangle? You're using this same theorem, and what you're going to do, pick two sides. That 3 plus, plus 7 should be greater than what? The third side. Now, is that the only one you have to check? No, you have to combine all of them. So how many different things do we need to check? 3. 3 plus 7. We already checked that one. Give me another one. 7 plus 8. It should be greater than what? The other side, which is 3. And then what's the last one? 3 plus 8, good. And it should be greater than? Now, we check all those. Is this one true? 3 plus 7 bigger than 8? Yeah. yeah. 7 plus 8 bigger than 3? Yeah. 3 plus 8 bigger than 7? So, is it possible for those to be the sides of a triangle? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Russell, I just got you a trick on that triangle. Two, three, five. What's wrong with it? I, I, I just understand why you're giving us such high stakes in order to get an A. No. Oh. Yeah, I just got it. Because it's impossible. It's an equilateral. Equilateral. Yeah, but if you if you draw it out, it will right. And if it's it's not a triangle, but if you had to make it some kind of shape, it would be an equal uh, angle. All right. So what Brian's saying, if I if I take this and you see on here, it's got like twenty and thirty, right? I'm going I'm going to use that as two. So let's say this was two inches, just for the sake, so that I can actually show you something. And then on this other one, let's go with three. It's about that long. If we had another one of these and you measured that bottom side, right now would it be five? Mm -hmm. Look what? Where, where do you think it has to be if this is two, this is three? When it gets to here, then how long am I? What's two and three together? Uh, five. This is a straight line. So this is a straight line. Well, how am I going to draw that triangle? We'll do it. You can't. Now, if I move it down just a little bit, that third side, is it going to be 5? No, it could be like 4.999999 if I moved it just very little. But is it ever going to be able to be 5? Any two sides of a triangle have to add up to be more than the third side because if they don't, you can't have a triangle. So what would we do on this? How could I explain that that's not a triangle? Yeah, two plus three should be greater than what? Should be greater than five. It's not. So not a triangle. Two plus three is equal to five. It's not greater than five. So the theorem that we had about remote interior angles, angle 1 plus angle 2 has to equal angle 4, the exterior angle. This is sort of a stupid theorem here. This is one, the math person that made this up just wanted to get their name in the geometry book. Because the ruler one, which is small, measure and yeah. tell me how well that was because how to line up a ruler. Right. That that was because Wes, it might not affect you, but if you come into some of my other geometry classes and and I hand out rulers and you see the kid in the back one <laughs> chewing on the ruler instead of using it, then you'd know why you have to do stuff like that. <laughs> I said other classes, right, and I didn't mention your name. Why would I be the one chewing on it? I'm the one spinning it. He's spinning it on his pencil. Look at the guy who's in there flying. <laughs> All right, so this theorem, again, this theorem, sort of a silly theorem. 
If these two together add up to give you this exterior angle, this theorem says that neither one of these can be bigger than that one. Sort of common sense, right? If you add two things together and it gives you something, the two things you added together can't be more than the first thing, otherwise it wouldn't work. Okay? Considering that we're not allowed to have negative angles, right? Because if you have negative numbers, then that, that would work. But these two both have to be smaller than that angle. Okay? That's true. Yep. Yeah. This last theorem down. Um, we talked about this earlier this year, so I'm not even sure why they stuck this back in this uh, this section. Remember earlier this year we had, and we talked about this last time too, we had the road here and somebody was stuck out in the desert and tried to get them to that road. What's the path that you're going to have them take? Peyton's a mean person with, with splinters in his behind because he's going to be setting the bench tonight after I tell his dad that he's not oh, going to no. play hard. I didn't always play hard. I didn't know you were asking if we were uh, going to play hard. He told me he played harder at practice the other day. So we uh, want that to be a right angle. Emma, page We want that to be a right angle. I know you're going to shoot more tonight, too, if I come watch. Pull up. Shoot that 8-footer. 8-footer? 8, 10, 12-foot? Yeah, no, yeah. Don't tell me to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's better for the team if I don't shoot. Like, you guys just, all of you just killed me. If you pull up and shoot that little short shot, college is the same way now. I hate watching college games anymore. They shoot like half court shot. It's either a half court shot or a layup. It can't be anything in between. I'm thinking, you got a seven foot tall guy standing five foot from the basket and you want to drive right into him and you're six foot tall. That makes no sense. Why not pull up? You're, you're driving down there hard. Stop. The big guy, he's like, he can't do anything. He's too dang on slow. Peyton's a three point shooter. Dude, they need to raise the goals in like in the end. So. Yeah, it's getting a little ridiculous now. Yeah, whatever shot they can make is a dunk and they walk up and they're like They won't <laughs> they won't do it now. They talked about that ten years ago when I was younger. They yeah, well guys were like eighteen tall then and they were freaking out because they were six two. Well they won't do it now. <laughs> they won't do it now just because of you watch ESPN, I watched ESPN this morning, of course the they show the top ten for each day. Yeah, top 10 it's like, yeah. This well, no, top ten tall. plays, oh, yeah. and it's, it's they're all dunks. <laughs> that's yeah. all. It's, it's all dunks. Exactly. Yeah. Top ten dunks. Well, you're like scary to me. I have like eighth graders that are white, and they're like six graders. They're white. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Brian, now you can't say anything because now I got that on tape. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like yeah. it's not. It's not like. You be. You be in. Uh, what is it? Uh, you'll have to go to a, a psychiatrist or somebody to help you get to know that, hey, we're all the same. You can't be. Now, I will say this. Number one, I, uh, I tell you, make sure you start bringing your books, I say that, and make sure you start bringing your tablets every day, because we're going to start using your tablets. Make sure you write this down. I know Brian says, nobody watches this stuff anyway, because like, they tell me people use Moodle, and I've said this before in here, stuff like with quizzes and stuff. If you get on Moodle, sometimes... Could that maybe help you with the yeah, quiz? Yeah, there's some homework assignments there on there, too. Yeah, I can get tomorrow's. Now, not only that, you could probably, you know, you see that I have this PowerPoint. There's other PowerPoints on there. When I give a quiz and it's on the PowerPoint, I'm not going to say any more. If you can figure it out, you can figure it out. I don't know how much you're going to do. The answer's not on there. There was a homework. There was a homework that we did a few days ago. Remember, I put the answers on the PowerPoint? And then we're on the quiz. 
and the quiz was right there on the PowerPoint. If you would have looked at that PowerPoint the previous day, would you have been able to get all the answers for the homework? And would you have been able to get all the answers for the quiz? Yeah. All right, the other thing, real quick, I forgot about this. This is your homework. The other part of your homework, I about forgot your guys' class. So listen carefully. This is why you need your tablets from here on out, because we're going to start taking quizzes and stuff on them. If you go to Moodle, listen so you understand this. If you go to Moodle, we're in week six. It's got this highlighted yellow or whatever tan that is around it. We're right here. This is today's assignment. Today's notes, I'll put the video on here of today. You look right below it, there's a vocab quiz. Right? <laughs> All you got to do is click on that vocab quiz. It pops up. You answer the questions. Hit send or whatever it says. I can't remember. It says turn in or something. Submit. submit. Thank you. It says submit. So you've probably done this before, right? Hit submit, send it in, it goes right into the gradebook. I think on this one, I think maybe you get like three chances. So you could better your grade. No, it's vocab quiz. How many? It's above that. Oh, I see it. It's only like five questions. We can get out of here in three minutes. Three minutes. So do this quiz, also do the two pages. Uh, that's your assignment for, what's today, Tuesday, Thursday. Make sure you get on there. This quiz will be shut down. It says on it when it's shut down. I can't remember when. Or it says on the calendar, the calendar over to the side. Um, if you look over here, it says on it. Uh, let me go back over here. Yeah, we can have a pressure. I guess that would be a piece of ham. No. Piece of ham.